Monday from Serena Winners and the Cavs to Mary Kay Cabot and the Browns. Mary Kay. Hey, hey, hey I love the Christmas tree back there. It looks That's like it's huge. growing right out of your living room. <laughs> <laughs> It's only half decorated, but you know, it's a start. So it's coming along. There we have it. Yeah, yep. that thing's that thing's monumental. It's really it that's is. a real ceiling it, kisser. Yeah, I had to cut uh, <laughs> the top two feet of off of it. I uh, overshot it by two feet, but wow. you know, I was a little overzealous and uh, I got a little excited. Did you go into <laughs> Did you go into the metro parks to get that? Uh, practically, yeah. I could have gotten this right on my way to work one day up to Brown's practice over yeah, there by Mastiff. But um, I actually uh, did go uh, to a garden center and haul this thing back home. Nice. Very nice. Very hey, nice. Hey, Mary Kay, what's the atmosphere like right now? In like, uh, essentially, they've been. Uh, we all know. We all know they have like a point. They're out of it. They're chance, done. Whatever. But realistically, they're out of it. So what it could still happen when the game is over, you know, after the game and, you know, as you go to the prep, what what do you expect? What what was the atmosphere like in the locker room after the game? And what are you expecting it to be like this week? Well, I think Miles Garrett summed it up pretty well after the game when he said, you know, we're going to continue to try to kick the door down until someone tells us that we can't kick the door down anymore. And if we don't have any shot ourselves, uh, then we'll try to spoil it for someone else. We have pride. We're going to leave it all out there. We're going to play for our fans this Saturday. And I think that's exactly what you're going to see. I think you'll see Deshaun Watson take another step up like he did last week. I think you'll see Miles Garrett go out there and do everything he possibly can uh, to, to try to strap the team on his back and, and win this football game. I think you'll see a really great effort at First Energy Stadium on Saturday, even though for all intents and purposes, they have no playoffs at stake. So there's four games left. Uh, what's their, I know the players obviously want to go out there and they want to win and they want to say all that stuff, but uh, th- th- from a fan's perspective, there, there's no, you know, there's no draft choice at, at stake here for, you know, at least in the first round. Realistically, as you look at the schedule, because you've got the two conference games and you've got two other games that are winnable, um, do, do you think that anybody is being evaluated in these final four jobs as to whether or not they'll be back next season? And if so, who are those individuals? Well, certainly, yes. There will be guys that, that will be looked at over these next four games to determine if they are going to be back or not. And I think you can look uh, at, you know, a couple of people like, you know, Kareem Hunt. He's asked to be traded. Will he be back? Greedy Williams, he was a healthy scratch last week. Uh, he's someone that I think you have to look at and wonder if he's going to be back. Jadavian Clowney, I know he wants to play with uh, Deshaun Watson, uh, but his contract is also up. And, you know, he always kind of marches to his own drummer and makes his decision in his own time. But knowing that Deshaun Watson is here, I think he'll probably want to be back. And he had a really, really good game in Cincinnati. He was all over the place. Jadavian is a very, very good football player. And I think he still has plenty left in the tank. Uh, I think there are some guys on the offensive line they'll have to take a look at. Uh, You know, Jack Conklin is in the last year of his contract. I think they need to evaluate that position and make sure they feel really good about that. Uh, they have to see uh, what's going to happen at center for them. So that's an area to look at. And then, you know, a player like an Anthony Schwartz, I, I think he'll come back and get another chance next year. But, you know, will he maybe be able to play in the final game and they can take another look at him? Jacoby Brissett, you guys are showing him right now. He's somebody that a decision will have to be made on. What about although, coaches, Mary Kay? Well, coaches, they're going to take a good hard look I think at, on the defensive side of the ball and on special teams, I think Kevin Stefanski is safe, but on the other sides of the ball, uh, you know, I do think that they will look long and hard at those things and try to determine did the defense underachieve because of anything that went on schematically or didn't happen schematically. Uh, you know, were these coaching issues, were these personnel issues? So they will have those uh, very difficult discussions in the off season on those sides of the ball. Mary Kay, you say Stefanski safe. You know, I would think so. I guess my thought is, though, with Jimmy Haslam, I guess you never know. But, I, I, I mean, I think he's had his worst year as a head coach, in my opinion, this year. I wouldn't fire him personally, but I figure he's going to be on the hot seat. But as you say with, this, with the other coaches, I mean, I think Joe Woods and Mike Prefer both have to go. I, I think they've overall, through three jobs, three seasons, done a bad job. I would replace them both. If you had to bet right now, 
Uh, I obviously you think Stefanski's going to be back. Ultimately, do you think Woods and Prefer will be gone? Well, that's why I mentioned I think that they yeah. they will have the hard discussions that they need to have about those situations. And you you know you can't go into those discussions saying oh they're definitely going to be gone. Uh, but but I think that that it's pretty safe to say that those uh, you know those two coaches uh, will you know get a long look at the offseason gotcha. and they'll decide. Gotcha. Uh, you know, again, was it the fact that they did not add enough talent at the defensive tackle position and that they had many injuries at the middle linebacker position? Uh, or was it something else? Was it that, uh, you know, that Greg Newsom was playing out of position? Or was it that, you know, John Johnson three isn't doing some of the things that he did when he was uh, with the Rams? So they'll take a long, hard look at it if they determine that it was more than, you know, just some guys not playing up to their potential, because I think there was plenty of that. I mean, we thought we all heard and thought all along the way that, you know, we were going to see these great seasons from Jordan Elliott and JOK and Grant Delpit and all these guys. And for whatever reason, those things didn't really materialize the way anybody thought they would. Uh, so it all has to be put into the hopper and they have to decide what they're going to do with those sides of the ball. Mary Kay, you mentioned Deshaun Watson's progression from week or game one to game two. You expect an even bigger progression now heading into game three. We only see him on Sundays. You see him multiple times throughout the week at practice. Was it noticeable to you heading into Sunday's game against Cincinnati that he was getting more comfortable with these guys in practice? And is that something we can expect to continue as he continues to practice with these guys and get more reps and get that timing down? Like, was it noticeable well, the, the progression? I'm yeah, I mean, I can't honestly say that, you know, when I watched practice and the, you know, first 15 minutes that we're allowed to watch, that he looked significantly better than he did during training camp or any of the offseason practices uh, that we saw. Um, but, you know, what I did see was that he was, you know, running from drill to drill. He was trying to, you know, get the, uh, the speed and the tempo of the game. He did not have Amari Cooper in practice most of the week. He didn't have David Bell in practice most of the week. So when we were out there, uh, he was throwing mostly to Michael Woods. Anthony Schwartz had a concussion. So he was throwing to Michael Woods and Donovan Peoples-Jones for the most part, and then some practice squad guys. So, no, I can't honestly say that I – could tell in practice last week that he was going to get better. But just by virtue of getting that whole first game under his belt and out of the way and all the emotions and all the things that went on in Houston, I think he just had to know uh, that, that he was going to be significantly better. Now, having said that, it still is hard to go out there uh, without having any practice with Amari Cooper throughout the week and have it look significantly better. Or uh, when you are under pressure, I mean, his rating under pressure was something like 27 uh, compared to like 96 when kept clean. When you're going to be under that much pressure, it's still not going to look that great at times. Uh, but I think you'll see him, uh, you know, even take another leap up this week. Let's talk about the response to Deshaun. You were in Sin City. Uh, we heard the response as soon as he came out there. A lot of boo birds. It wasn't obviously that big of a deal in Houston because the only people there were lunatics and there were like 75 people there, obviously. But in Cincy, you had a uh, rivalry game, actual fans. They hate us because we're Cleveland and they're still mad because we won the Civil War and whatnot up here because they're a Confederate state essentially down there. <laughs> so all the reasons in the world to hate us, they booed the heck out of them, seemed to calm down after the first quarter. Uh, was that the case? And how do you think that affected him? And what do you think it'll be like moving forward? Well, I think he knows that he has to block out all of this stuff. There are going to be chants. There are going to be signs, uh, you know, Team, you know, fans are going to do whatever they possibly can to get inside his head. I think he handled it better this game. Uh, it will get to him at times because, as he mentioned last week, when I asked him if Houston hit him harder than he thought it would, he said, I'm human. And he is human. So when he hears the kinds of things that he hears at these games, it is going to rattle him somewhat. But I think as he, you know, goes through each week, uh, it will get perhaps a little bit easier for him. I'm not 100% sure about that, but he does have the support of his teammates. Uh, they come to his defense. They come, you know, they have his back. Jacoby Brissett has been very helpful in that regard. So have others. So, you know, they all know that they have to kind of close ranks and get through this. Mary Kay, yesterday, as we were sort of taking inventory of the loss and ultimately the season that slipped away, Jim Donovan was on with me on the five o'clock hour 
And I, I, I know that you talk to Jimmy. We all respect Jimmy's opinion. His view from 30,000 feet of the Browns is as accurate as anyone that, that I know. And I thought I, I was a little bit surprised because Jimmy can be a little reserved sometimes, but he always speaks his mind. I, I thought Jimmy was emphatic on one point that he made during our discussion, and that was that the Browns, in their building of this team, as they're collecting players and building this roster, he made it a strong point to say very plainly, they have to draft smarter players. Making it a point to say the mistakes that have happened for a a big part of them, defensively especially, have been mental. And, And he really, really brought into question sort of the football IQ of this team. Is that as big an issue as as Jimmy sort of made it out to be? Because it seems to be that he's right. And if so, is the organization aware of aware of that? And how will they pivot? Well, I'll tell you what I think about that. I think that some of it is the fact that the players are young. And some of that wisdom, that football wisdom comes as you are around the game a little bit more. And you see more and you hear more and you're coached more. So I don't think it's necessarily a football IQ issue at all because they make a point of drafting very, very smart players. I think in some cases it's that they're young and they're inexperienced. Now, as Sione Takitaki went along in his career, he suddenly became a really smart player this year because the game slowed down for him. He understood exactly where he fit in the, in the scheme of things. He knew where he was supposed to be. He knew where everybody else was supposed to be. And, you know, he was able to be a field general because of it. Uh, then you take a, a young player like a Tony Fields who has not played much on defense and you're occasionally going to get a mistake or you're going to go too hard uh, at the punter. So I don't think it's a matter of football IQ because they make a a big, huge point of drafting super smart players. So I I really don't think it's that as much as it it is youth and inexperience in some cases. Mary Kay, you mentioned Jack Conklin before. Um, James Hudson was a fairly high draft pick. He's played well when he's had an opportunity. I, I assume, I know you talked about they're going to make a decision on Conklin. I mean, the money he's making and the way he's playing, I got to assume he's cut at the end of this year. Is there a chance they're going to play Hudson over him the rest of the way? Don't we need to see him play regularly? What's the, to me, I, I don't see any point of continuing to play Conklin over him. What, what, do you, what do you think about that? Well, in some cases, I think you will find that if there is a veteran that has a, you know, an injury or, or some reason that it might be better for them to rest, Uh, Now is going to be the time to play some of those younger guys and to see what they can do. So I do think it probably would be prudent for them uh, to play some James Hudson and see if he can handle the job full time uh, for next year. I think there are some other guys in that category. There are some receivers that you kind of want to give them some more time and see what they can do. Uh, You know, it might get to the point where even though Miles Garrett said there's absolutely no way he's going to shut it down until they drag him off the field, uh, I think it might be pretty wise to roll him out of there a little bit and roll in more a little bit more of an Isaiah Tomix or an Alex Wright and let those guys see what they can do. So I do think to a certain extent, this is an opportunity uh, to see what you have in some of the younger guys. Mary Kay, I couldn't agree more. To me, this feels like September in a baseball season where you're 30 games out of first place. You shut down a lot of your position guys. You call up guys from the minor leagues. It's time to see what you have. I want to know what Jerome Ford can do if, you know, if, because if Kareem Hunt does move on, it's likely that he will, you know, is it Jerome Ford? Is it the Ernest Johnson? And, and that's what it's, it's sad to say, but that's where this franchise yep. is right now. And we're in the last quarter of the season. I, I hope they do shut Miles Garrett down. What are we going to learn about Miles Garrett in the next four games that we don't already know? Why put those miles on his body? when the end game is obviously to make the playoffs and that and that ship has sailed seems silly yeah right and especially if there are some guys that are going to need a surgery after the season and we don't know yet about this i mean if he if he needs a little bit of a cleanup you might want to get a jump on that um i'm actually wondering about you know maybe an amari cooper and what's going on with him you know talking about having a core muscle issue, uh, sometimes that might you know, be something that they want to take a longer look at. And it's a chance for some of the younger guys to maybe play, maybe some of the practice squad guys, call them up a little bit and see what they can do. But certainly um, this should be an opportunity 
uh, for some of those guys because you want to see what Deshaun Watson is going to have for next season. You need to know. I mean, do we, you know, what do we need to do at right tackle? What do we need to do at center, receiver? Uh, as you mentioned, running back. See what Jerome Ford can do. Throw him the ball out of the backfield a few times and, mm-hmm. you know, see how he can handle it. Get him ready uh, for 2023 because they've got to hit the ground running next year. They're not going to have time for any ramping up period. Mary Kay, I wanted to wrap it up with this. Um, we're going to actually talk about more on the show after this. We, we, we've dove into everything involving the Bengals and Browns this past Sunday, the fourth down play, which I thought was crazy, whatever. But there's one play we we accidentally didn't get to, which we're going to get to next, and that's the, the Samaj P. Ryan touchdown, the second Bengal touchdown. He goes into the middle of the line. He kind of gets stopped, basically, and Clowney just kind of runs by him, and then P. Ryan peels out and goes in for a touchdown. It seemed like Clowney and some of the other guys quit on that play. What do you, did, did anybody get an explanation on that and what happened on that play? No, we did not, uh, per se, get an explanation on that play. But you're right. I mean, they, that was a play where uh, sh- he shouldn't have been able to make that second effort right. and get in there that easily. But these are some of the issues that the Browns have had on, on defense all season long, you know, with their run defense. And like I said before, I think Jadavian had a really, really great hustle game. I thought he uh, was excellent in that game. In fact, he graded out over 90, according to Pro Football Focus, which I haven't looked yet, but it's, it's got to be one of the highest on, on the team and one of the highest in the league defensively for last week's games. So he, on that particular play, perhaps I think he – Thought he had him down, thought he had him stopped. I don't, he's not really one to give up on a play. Uh, I I suppose he, you know, I'd have to go back and look at it again. Uh, I did not really study that play per se, but uh, that's just, you know, one of the issues that they have had uh, with their run defense this season is that not everyone is always swarming to the ball and making sure that, that they're getting that guy down. Thanks, Mary Kay. Yeah, Mary Kay, thank you very much. We appreciate it. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hall of Fame writer Mary Kay Cabot. Stay thank strong, you. Mary Kay. Keep fighting the good fight. Yeah. You know, sometimes uh, when I when Thanks, I listen guys. to Jimmy, yeah. 